irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to the Hypno Fairy Godmother Show with Shirley Yance, only on LA Talk Radio. Hello, all, and welcome to the Hypno Fairy Godmother Show. I'm so glad that you found me so you can tell your friends and they can tell their friends, and who knows where this is going to go. Um, especially, and if you figure that, you know, you like what I'm talking about or that it might help somebody, you can always make a comment on my Facebook site and let me know. I love to hear what y'all are thinking about. So I am Shirley, a clinical hypnotherapist, coach, and speaker here in Southern California, and a glitter and rainbow girl going way, 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 way back. My specialty is working with the LGBTQIA community, the BDSM community, the kink community, kind of anyone that doesn't feel like they fit in in that traditional sense. I wouldn't have it any other way. So what I hope is that we get to maybe have a little fun, you get a little inspiration, bring a smile to your face, and maybe a little giggle to your heart. By now, I hope y'all know how we're going to start this show because it's what I do, it's what I love, and it's what I tell everybody to do. So now if you're in a safe place, we've talked about the safe place before. So if you're in a safe place, not driving, not moving, heavy equipment, working on something that you're supposed to be concentrating on, here's what we're going to do. So I want you to just sit there, take a nice deep breath, hold it, and exhale with a smile. That's how we're going to get it going. And now part two. And part two definitely needs to be in that safe place because we got some moving to do. So here we go. I want everybody in that safe place to start wiggling their toes. Come on, wiggle those toes in your shoes, out of your shoes. I don't care. I'm out of my shoes because that's basically who I am. But wiggle those toes. Now, wiggle your butt. I mean, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle those buns. Scrunch them together. Go for it. I have never met anyone that can wiggle their buns without smiling. It's one of those things and that's why I make people do it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another one of those deep breaths. And as you exhale this time, I want you to say something like an affirmation or something that makes you feel good today. Just any little thing. So when I exhale, I always say, go for it just go for it you can say i got this it's under control it's gonna be okay no big deal just some sort of little affirmation that that keeps you going makes you feel good inside so you have now loosened up your ankles your hips uh lower back a little your shoulders and if i've got a little extra time i roll the head one way and then the other way because you know you don't want one side to feel jealous to help keep all of this wonderful show and happiness going, um, I want to thank my Patreon members for helping me keep it going. So the Bambit app, which I still have a really good deal on, that'll only be on till the end of the month. So that's the 31st. I'm changing the deal. So if you want to get in on it, now would be the time. And there's Tamiza's Treats, who... Nothing is better for gluten-free, sugar-free. She's my go-to, you know, peanut butter, chocolate chip person. Um, I just, yeah, go to Misa. And to all of my newer Patreons, you know what? I couldn't do this without you. So thank you, and I love you bunches. 
One other thing before I get going, I know you're like, come on, how many more things you got? Well, before I get totally going, I have a reminder from the Los Angeles House of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence that today, which is October 19th, is actually the last day here in California for you to register online or by mail. So if you haven't done either of those things, they want to remind you today is your last day if you're going to register by mail or you can just go online and register. It is super, super easy. So my lovelies, we are finally going to get down to the nitty gritty of the show today. This, um, wow, this week was quite a week for me and it was sad and a little more stressful. So I decided that today we're going to actually talk about manifesting happiness, flipping that switch. So we've talked different ways about flipping the switch and, and trying to think of all the positives and I've given, you know, lots of ideas on how to do this. So I, I was looking through different articles and I saw this technique and it caught my attention. So once something catches my attention, I am like a groundhog. I am telling you, I will go so far down that hole and read everything I can on it because I would never bring a technique or a method or anything to you or any of my clients without doing some due diligence and trying it and seeing how it would work. So that would be, that was this week is, is kind of what I did. Um, and this actual technique for manifesting happiness is called the Nikola Tesla three, six, nine manifesting technique. I have no idea why it's called the Nikola Tesla technique, but I've been a fan, for, you know, of Tesla's for a really long time. And so that got me, you know, reading all of a sudden and I thought, yeah, this is, this is something that I can, you know, kind of, kind of hang with. So why the numbers three, six, nine, the synchronicity of these three numbers are in direct correlation with the universe. So the number three is significant because it's the direct link to the universe. Some people say it's their direct link to their source, their universe, whatever you choose to call it. I would never, yeah, whatever you decide. The six represents the deepest strength that we have inside of ourselves. And you guys are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for. You just, you don't know. And, and lately we've been finding out how much internal strength we have. So that's the number six. And the number nine is in accordance with the moving on from the past and helps release any feelings of self-doubt and negativity. Now, doesn't that sound great? Just three, six, nine, go Nikola Tesla. So... Like I said, I've seen a lot of techniques. I've seen some that take a really long time that I don't know whether I would be able to do on a consistent basis. And then I've seen some that are just silly. And we have names of these different techniques and it's like everybody seems to have their own little thing. But I try to find the differences in them because just calling it a different name doesn't make it any better. There has to be something in it. There just does. So this idea is to help you bring some good vibrations. I will not sing that and y'all will be happy about that. So the very most important message that you have to do, and this is starting out first thing in the morning, just do it, is you need to come up with an important message to yourself that is at least 17 seconds long. 17 seconds long. 
I can see some of y'all faces going, oh, she's going to make me do stuff again. Yes, I'm going to make you do stuff again. 17 seconds is not that long. You know you can do it. And 17 seconds of pure thought is what gets the ball rolling and ignites the start of your manifestation. So during these 17 seconds, you know, we should think not negative in any way, shape, or form. We don't let doubt creep in because you know what that'll do. Negative goes on negative and we're not into negatives. No, 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 no. So 17 seconds of just a wonderful thing. Just what do you want to manifest that day? Or what do you want to manifest as a whole? It's that 17 seconds of manifesting your desires. Just something that you want. And it all has to be positive. So no unhelpful things, no bad, no sad. We keep it on the upside because, you know, bringing happiness is what we're trying to do. So if you're putting in unhappy things, you're kind of defeating your purpose here. So make sure you write it down. I know, I know, writing it down. Um, and once you write it down, make sure you say it out loud. Look in the mirror. You're in the bathroom anyway. Look in the mirror and say whatever your affirmation is or your wants, your, desi your desires even. And, and look at that mirror and say it with conviction. You can say things with conviction for 17 seconds. Anybody can do stuff for 17 seconds. Okay? So no deflating your momentum. Just proud and go for it. So, it, you know, it's, it's doing that affirmation. It's doing that desire, that want that we've talked about. Make sure that, you know, that you... I would write it down because if you just say it out loud, you're bound to forget it. So pull out, you know, me and the paper and pencil thing, or you put it on your phone. Doesn't matter. I just want to make sure that you have that down for the day because we forget. We just forget. That's all right. But here's one of the things that you need to remember that we've also kind of gone over a little bit is that it's okay to dream huge. It's okay to dream extravagant and high and throw in all the bells and whistles, which is great. But don't get discouraged when ultimate doesn't happen immediately. It's really good advice to keep a lookout for the smaller things that happen that, that, you know, will lead you to your bigger goal. Sometimes if we want something and we put out the good feelings and we throw those into the universe and we didn't win the lotto again, but maybe you got a refund check. Maybe, you know, you got some unexpected, you know, some something unexpected that will lead you to your next step. It's very important that we don't get discouraged over not getting the huge, huge thing the first time. This takes a little while. This is not instant. I wish it was. I wish I could wiggle my nose and give you all everything that you could ever want and desire, but we, we have to work at it. So during the day, while things get crazy, you know, we have work, we have home, family, and all those crazy things, 
start to take us over. So as your day starts going on, the craziness and the frustrations and stuff like that start to kind of take you over a little bit. Maybe somebody was grumpy or, and it just, all that ooze just kind of sticks to you sometimes. So while you're taking that break that you deserve and you know you deserve it, I want you to go find a nice quiet place and um, I want you to write that down. I want you to, that same affirmation, 17 second affirmation that you did this morning, I want you to write it six times. Yes, I said six times. <laughs> and then I want you to repeat it out loud six times. Now, if you're in an environment where you can't just, you know, sit outside and start really loud telling everybody your affirmation for the day, that's totally understandable. Um, if you can find a quiet place where, you know, you're taking a break that you need anyway. So if you've got the opportunity, go sit under a tree by yourself, go sit at a bench you know, take just like a little walk so that you can have not only written it, that you've actually said it. Okay. Now try not to rush this part. Consider it part of your daily self-care. Because I know that, that you can do this. And the other thing is when you're saying it out loud, Say it with inspiration and passion. Don't say it like, she's making me say this out loud. No, 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 no. Remind yourself that this is what you want. This is what your reality needs to be. This is what the desire that you want. And this is your way of, of throwing that into the universe. And yes, you know how I feel about writing things down because when you write it down, you remember it longer. And that little mental Rolodex that we have, that subconscious that we have talked about, oh, a lot. Well, when you're writing it down, what happens is that little subconscious in there goes, hey, this looks important. So let's put this in the front of your little hard drive or Rolodex so that you can recall it easier. So that as you're going through this and the longer you do it, the more days, the easier this will get. But it, when your, your subconscious realizes that what you need to remember is important to you, and important for what you're doing, then it's not as hard to bring it up. And so that's why I tell you to write things down and say them out loud. Okay, here we go. Before your head hits the pillow, it's time to get out that notebook again. You should have it. We, we, I told you, you should have one with you, one in your car, and one by your bed. Now, if you can remember to take the same one with you at every place you go, that's perfect. But we tend to forget things. You know, you have one, you leave it in the car, you go, I don't wanna walk out to the car, so I'm just gonna do half of this tonight because I don't have a notebook to write it down. That's why I tell you to have one by your bed too. So what I'm gonna tell you to do, and you know it's coming, you can feel it coming. Write down that affirmation nine times. That's right, same one from this morning that you told yourself in that mirror with such conviction and passion 
And that same one that while you were taking a break and relaxing, you were just going through it in your mind and you were writing it down some more. Nine more times. And then say it out loud. And I mean, say it, feel it, and believe it. Believe it. Um, you can just, you know, you can write it down and just sort of haphazardly do it. But why would you want to do that? We're talking about what you want, what you're trying to visualize and manifest. We don't do things like that, you know, just sort of half. And, you know, if you, depending on if you live alone or not or, or whatever your situation may be, for your evening, use it as your evening, maybe a meditation. You can light a candle um, while you're in the shower, getting rid of all the grit and grime and ooze of the day. You know, you don't want to write it in the shower, although I'm working on something. But you definitely want to say it in there. And the shower is also really good if you're doing one of those little meditations and you're saying this over and over. That, you know, if this is for you, this is not for everybody in your life to know that you're doing this. This is strictly for you. So if you don't want spouse, roommates, kids, whatever, knowing that you're doing this, that's all right. That is all right. You know, if you do it in the shower, this is just on you. Now, if you've got time to take a bath and you can do the candles and the whole bit and just make it into a full, wonderful meditation, that's the best. But we don't always have time to do that. So trying to, you know, give you, give you some other options. Now, I, I can, I can see it. You're going I already have a job and I have kids and don't look at it like you have a job because you're doing this for you, not anyone else. And I know that your brain is just like, ah, she keeps making me write down and say things. Yes, I do. But like I say, I would never make you do something that I'm not willing to do. So I have been working on this and the first time you have to do one of those 17 second, you know, affirmations and, and truly believe and, and tell yourself what it is that you want, you're trying to accomplish. I think it's easier if you're trying to write it down because if you're just trying to make it up as you go along, you don't have the sincerity. And it's important that you have the sincerity in, you know, what you're doing because you're doing it for you. So, you know, the idea is when you use this 369 method, you know, constantly and you put forth that energy to create the life that you desire, you need to try your best to stay within your own personal alignment. It is so essential to hold on to a vibration of receiving and knowing that you will receive what you've requested. But like I said earlier, always look out for the little stuff too. If it's not huge in the beginning, you know, that's okay. Sometimes things just come out of nowhere. We don't even know. Things just, and you'll look back at it and you'll go, I got it. I got it. Um, sometimes the subtleties aren't really good with some of us. You know, we need the gigantic affirmation or the gigantic knowing that this happened because of this. Well, it may take you a couple days and when you're thinking past through the days and you're like, now I got it. So don't give up. 
the other thing is when you do something, we know from studies that have been done that it takes at least 30 days, 30 days to make a new habit. Now, am I asking you to try this for at least 30 days? Yes, but I am at least asking for you to try this for at least two weeks. And I think by the time that you hit that two week mark, that you're going to start feeling it and you're going to start feeling that vibration and that what, if you wake up every morning and you say something wonderful and during the day you have a little time to yourself. So you say, you know, you're writing down more wonderful and at night, you know, you've gotten all the grunge of the day off and you get to end your day feeling that positive, encouraging mantra that you have chosen. And I've been thinking about this, this other part just a little bit, and it's like, do you have to do the same one every day? I'm going to say yes. And the reason why is if one day you're asking the universe to make one thing and the next day you're asking the universe to make something else and every day it's something different then how do you know when you've gotten what you desire so when you write that first mantra affirmation whatever you want to call it that make sure that it matters Make sure that you tell yourself that this is it. This sounds good. I can roll with this. Now, after the first week of doing this, you can make little tweaks. Tweaks are good. Starting from scratch, then you have to kind of ask yourself, did I really mean what I asked for? But I totally believe in tweaks. I you know, everybody gets to tweak things just a little bit and go, mm, maybe that wasn't the right word. So if you're just adding another word here, taking a word out there, not a problem. You're not going to mess the whole thing up. And no, you don't have to start over. But just keep going. And I know when you first start something new, whether it's journaling or doing this or other manifestations, it just feels daunting. And like, you're never going to be able to keep this going. But think of it this way. What you're actually doing is you're giving yourself about 20 minutes, three times a day. That's just for you. That's right. Just for you. And if your family is anything like mine, you spend longer than that trying to pick out a watch, pick out a movie to watch at night. And I'm not talking the 20 minutes. I am talking the full hour so that by the time, you know, you pick the movie, you've forgotten why. So, you know, you're not giving yourself, you're not taking great times out of your life. You're not neglecting anybody. You're not giving anything up. Matter of fact, if you do the last one in the shower, you're actually multitasking. But while you're saying that mantra nine times in the shower, don't forget to, you know, wash everything that needs to be washed. It, it can get a little, you know, confusing while you're trying to remember how many times you said it. And if you only say it eight times, that doesn't mean the world's going to come crashing down on you. It really doesn't. Because this is all for you. And it's not that easy to manifest things. Um, you know, there are so many shorter techniques that I've tried. But it all kind of comes down to the same thing. It comes down 
to your want and your passion to change you, to change your life. You're trying to become that best person, the best possible you. This is not an overnight thing. The things that we're trying to move past and get over, these aren't things that just happened one day. These are things that have taken a while to build up in your life. So slowly, it'll start to come back down. If you build it up, you can bring it back down. I read this great quote that said, think of it like you just ordered something from a restaurant. When you get it, you got it and you love it. But until you get it, you just keep thinking about it and asking. So, you know, that that that's a way you can do it um you know this is this is my one more thing that's added to that great weevil kung fu you know it's a way to help you become mentally stronger and if you're taking a walk while you're doing maybe your six times during the day you're also become physically stronger so I really want you to try this one for at least, like I said, two weeks. Give me, give me two weeks. And I know that I've talked to you about journaling and told you to do that every day. You can combine the two a little bit. So then you're actually multitasking there too, which is a great thing in my book. Anytime that you know, you can feel better about yourself and it helps you mentally. It helps you physically. It, you know, that that's where it, that's where it's at. Um, I would never want you to do stuff that takes away from, you know, your family, your job, your whatever, because we're doing this to make you better and to make you feel better. When we're working on that mental health first aid, that mental health, it takes a while. You know, we're, we're just trying to move it forward. And if, you know, you have your journal with you and you realize that you still need to do your six or nine a day, then you can go, okay, as a way of doing my journaling today, you don't actually have to say it that way. That's just kind of the way I say it in my head. But combine the two. Combine the two. It's all right. Because this is another part of that mental health that makes us who we are. The way we grow to fulfill our destinies. You know, we're trying so hard to become that perfect person. Well, don't be trying to be a perfect person. Just try to be the best you. Try to be the best you possible. You know, six out of seven days of the week, I try to be the best hypno fairy godmother I can be. I give myself that day that sometimes it just doesn't go right. And if you wake up, and you go, I can't do this. I I need to tap tap out for the day. It's all right. What you need to do is the next day, get back on the boat. Um, just get back on the boat. Uh, had a really great friend that told me it's okay to fall off the boat. Just don't get run over by it. So that's what we do. Doesn't mean you have to start from scratch. It just means you're just going to pick it right back up again when you get back into one of those, when you get back to where you feel comfortable inside of you. And this is doing those things that make you feel uncomfortable. You know, you have to embrace the love that's inside of you and share that love with others. You know, the others will see you 
They'll see what's inside of you. They'll notice the change. They may even ask you what you're doing. And if you have the confidence to pass it on, then pass it on. It's what we do. We help each other. It doesn't always seem that way in certain circumstances, but the whole object is to make you feel better and you be the best person you can be. Or as I like to say it, be that person that you wish you would have had growing up. If you can pass that along, then you're helping somebody with their mental health. Yeah, you know, Weeble Kung Fu, that's my Weeble Kung Fu, is just another way to make you stronger mentally. I, you know, it's, it's trying one thing. And if that thing is just so not you, then you go and check it off and go, ooh, tried it, not me. So you know what you do? You try the next thing. Because as we know, Weebles wobble but they don't fully fall down. So while you're wobbling this direction, you kind of notice something from this side and you kind of wobble that direction. Now you can even combine certain techniques. Uh, three, six, nine is sort of self-explanatory, but you know, you can combine things. Once, once you've got that, that weevil mentality, that weeble kung fu, that I can do this, that feel of being positive, that feel of doing and being what you really want, you'll notice how much easier it is to pass it along. And what's better than passing along? We all know that when we're dealing with our mental health, that we have ups and downs. We have incredible courage sometimes and epic fails. But even if you have one of those epic fails, okay, you can either think about it, think about it, think about it, and let it overtake you, or you process it, you do one of the many, many meditations, or just, just breathing, just breathing deep in your soul, and, and work your way through it, and then once you've worked your way through it, get back on the boat. We've all had epic fails. I, I have had more than I even like to imagine, but you know what? I take that and I give myself about half hour to wallow, give myself about a day to process. And then that's all the time I have. And sometimes I don't even have that much time because if something doesn't work, I got to keep moving on to the next thing. This is also about my mental health. So when I'm talking to you about these different ideas and the ways of journaling and getting it out and talking to other people or all of that, I'm also doing that. You never quit working on your mental health. You don't. I'd love to be able to go, and once you cross this line, you are just fine. And you will feel terrific for the rest of your life, and everything will be rainbows and puppies. But I can't. But what I can do is go, okay, no rainbows and puppies, but why don't we try this instead? Why don't we flip it around? spin it, slap it upside the head, give it another shot, or give something totally different a shot. You know, that's, you're embracing that fear. You're embracing the fear of failure. Now, sometimes we're embracing the fear of success. 
which sounds a little strange, but you can be almost as terrified of success as you can be terrified of failure. That's why when you're writing your affirmations and you're writing what you want, that you have to keep it positive and you have to give yourself credit. You can do it, whatever it is. There are 90 year old people doing amazing things. There are 80 year old people climbing mountains and changing careers and there's, you know, I saw today a 102 year old lady that, you know, made up her mind that there was something she wanted to do and there was nothing that was going to stop her. So we just keep working. You know, we don't give up. We keep on trying. You know, tell yourself if it matters to you, then it matters. And what you want and what you're desiring and whatever you decide to tell yourself to throw out to the universe isn't for anybody else. It's not. It's just for you. Now, you may enjoy that with other people, whatever it is. You may, you know, but basically it's all for you. You know, the both the mental and emotional is the most common reason that we don't even start something. The fear mentally and emotionally. What is it going to make us do? How's it going to make us feel? And don't go into it going, okay, well, I'm going to try this, but if it fails, then it fails. Never go into a new project, um, a new meditation, a new anything already granting it defeat. That's not how we do things. No, no, no. Working on positive mental health. Anybody can work on negative mental health. So don't doom before you start. Just, yeah, don't. It's not going to be quick and it's not going to be easy. And personal healing, we know, takes time. And it takes more than we want it to. But I know that we get discouraged. I know how easy it is to get discouraged. And you just have to, like I said, give yourself time to cry, scream, or yell. Give yourself time to process. And then get back on the boat. Many things have come to me without without me actually trying. And what that means is that there have been times that I've needed to make a change. And I knew deep down I needed to make the change, but I didn't really know what it was that I wanted. And I believe in looking for signs. Seriously, look for signs. Not like literally billboards that say, hey, you, this is what you're supposed to be doing next. Doesn't usually work that way, but look around for the little stuff. The stuff that repeats over and over or something that you didn't notice before. In my case, when I decided to become a hypnotherapist, I did not know that that's what I wanted to do, but I knew that how important it was for me to continue to help people around me. And I could no longer do that with the career that I had had before this, but I had no clue as to what I wanted to do. And I just kept telling myself, show me a sign. Sometimes it's as easy as that. I was like, come on a hint, give me something. And over a two day weekend, I saw the same ad on Facebook. 
every time I turned on my computer. I had never noticed this before. I'd never noticed the ad before. You know how we kind of just kind of look over at ads or scroll through them or whatever. But this same one kept popping up. And by the end of the weekend, I was like, okay, I get it. I'll check it out. It's, it's looking for that sign, that weird Facebook ad that you never really know is a true thing or a false thing. But I listened to it. And then I did all my research, went down that, that rabbit hole and just kept going until I decided to take a chance and make a phone call. So don't look for the huge and maybe you're in a transition and you're not exactly sure what it is that you're looking for. Like I was. Maybe your affirmation is, you know, someday in some way, I will see where I'm supposed to be. Make it a little bit longer because it's got to be 17 seconds. But just something really, you know, ask the universe. You're throwing all these ideas out to the universe. So you might as well throw that out to the universe too. And this 369, even if you're asking the universe for, you don't actually know, that's fine because you're continually asking. You're continually going, hey, if I keep asking, I'm going to see something. And I can guarantee you, you will see something. This week, um, I encourage you to get out, sit under that tree and think about your affirmations and write them down and say them out loud. You know, leave your house, go for a drive. Be careful because, you know, you got to take precautions now when we go out. But listen to your favorite music, an audio book. Think of something that you've always thought was fun to do and see how likely that is. And maybe there's an audio book on how to do it or somebody that's written a book on what they've done. You get to be creative, you know, dance while you're listening to that music. Feel it. You have feelings inside of you. Let them come out. So you've got this. I'm telling you, you've got this. Remember this week to also, you know, contact people that maybe you haven't heard from in a while, especially your extroverts. Um, some of us are really missing the outside world a little bit. Make sure that they're okay. Make sure that our first responders are okay. Buy one a cup of coffee. That'll make both of you feel happy. It's a pay it forward. Love pay it forwards. So you can do this. You can get out. You can do what you need to do. Um, remember, if you didn't catch something on the show today or you want to re-listen to it, I repost all of my shows on my Facebook page and my YouTube page. And you can leave me comments on both. Um, you can find me everywhere. So, you know, you can always re-watch, re-listen, re-everything else. And every day, take note of your mental state. Check in with yourself and see where you're going. And, you know, if you need to make an online appointment with me, I'm always here for you. If you've got any questions or comments, just text me. Well, email me. Email me works much better. You know, hypnofairygodmother at yahoo.com. So everybody remember, let's take this nice deep breath. Hold it. And exhale with a smile. Thanks for tuning in. Tell all your friends where to find my show. And I will see you next week. 
You're listening to the Hypno Fairy Godmother Show with Shirley Yance, only on LA Talk Radio. 